Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Ghost Girl Diaries channel. We're today streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Wow, I feel like I forgot how to stream. It's been such a hot minute. I uh, I took a big break. I'm going to bring in Kat. Miss Cormier is here today. Hello. This is a How are you? It's good. It's good. It feels good. weird because I always forget like when I take a break, I'm like, I ha what? How do I do this? Thing? Okay. I feel like I'm like, oh, I don't remember. I don't remember anything. <laughs> um, it's like minor panic. It's true. It's like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. I have no idea what's going on. And really, like, it's like, okay, have a seat. You're fine. Um, so, yeah, this is a paranormal podcast for those of you jo brave enough to join the circle. Today is not totally paranormal chat, though, which I guess is good. I feel like these chats balance us out a little bit for all of the crazy topics that we sort of talk about in between um next week is going to be lake monsters with elfie i know she's really excited about that one and we're actually going to be drawing in shaylee who is our newest crew member she will be joining us starting i think two weeks from now and mm -hmm. she's very excited she's very excited she's got some really cool topics that she got to pick Today, though, um, I'm actually handing the reins to Kat. I haven't done this before because Kat's going to be actually interviewing me and, and like, I'm the guest in my own channel. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so uh, here's Miss Cormier. I'm handing it over to you, Miss Cormier. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here, Crystal. You're <laughs> it's your own channel. <laughs> Fine. It's true. I'm a little nervous. I'm like, no one's ever, like, in my circle has interviewed me before. You know what I mean? But yeah. you were talking yeah. about, like, the journey, and you're like, you know, there's so many things you've been through that you need to, like, share with people. I think it's important. I also think that, um, you know, for those of you that might be new, we've had some new followers and new subscribers and things like that that might not be very familiar with Crystal right off the bat. I think this is an awesome opportunity for, you know, you to kind of share your space and share your story. And just to do a little shout out, uh, if you haven't gotten Crystal's book yet, Ghost Girl Diaries, mm -hmm. The Love Diaries, mm -hmm. you should definitely buy a copy on Amazon. You can also get it on Barnes & Noble, I believe, mm -hmm. online. Yeah. And um, There's yeah, a publisher that's it. currently wanting to pick it up, uh, which I'm shocked mm -hmm. about. It's had such great sales and, and it has very positive feedback. It's not perfect. There's a couple of... I, it was self-published, so I did it myself. But, you know, it's like, if you're going to be a hater, show me the book you wrote then. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to hate on me for my few mistakes in there? Give me your book. Let me see it. But, yeah, there's a publisher that's currently wanting to step in to pick it up where they would fix those uh, mistakes and then re-develop re, re like, it, which is shocking. So yeah. it's crazy, like, the doors that open. Like, the universe opens so many doors for you once you get that, like, manifestation going. So I'm very grateful. It's so true. I mean, you've worked so hard you know, your whole career in film. And, uh, you know, let's just start right there. You know, let's just start right from the beginning. Okay, the very beginning of if, it all. If I black out, just revive <laughs> I'll revive you for sure. Or if I just start staring at his face, like, are you there? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, Crystal, yeah. you wait. Literally. literally. <laughs> um, career, like you're wanting to start Paranormal Challenge Days. Yeah, let's start it up. You know, I feel like you've already shared your paranormal story. Um, I feel like that's already kind of been, you know, publicized and out mm -hmm. there, and that's what you're very well known for. Um, but, you know, just right off of the bat, actually, here's a really good question before we get started. Mm -hmm. And I already know how you're going to answer. Mm -hmm. um, would are you, Do you consider yourself a paranormal investigator or a filmmaker? Ooh, um, well, both, obviously, but starting my career like if you're talking even previous to um being on travel channel with paranormal challenge i never ever ever wanted to be in a paranormal group and I, that is not to say to discourage anyone that's watching because i have promoted paranormal groups like so many people are like crystal how do i get into paranormal and i always mm -hmm. say find a local group start getting involved with a local group that, however, was never meant to be a part of my journey. That isn't to discourage you, so let's please make that very clear. Don't take words out of my mouth. 
why did I not want to be in a paranormal group? For so many reasons. I had my own, I guess, with my very small mutual friends. But um, if you're talking these massive groups that run 20, 30 people per group, you guys know. You've seen them online. I never wanted to run one of those. I never had a desire to be in one. There's so many reasons why. There's logistics behind it between drama that goes on where like people fight. I've heard horror stories where it's like high school nitpicking. If you can go in and like mute all of the drama out and just focus on what you want to do, which is investigate. Another reason is a paranormal equipment is expensive. You know, like one item, a millimeter, like the good one with the rim function, you're talking $196 to $250, depending on where you buy it. So if you're having to run a group where you're providing equipment for like 20 or 30 people, what, how are you going to profit, like make money back? The, and, and how I've seen other people do it is they'll do like um, local seminars or local conferences and they'll go sell like jewelry and crystals and tarot stuff. Like, so they make money that way, but there's really no way to make money back on it. So the reason I turned to the filmmaking side was because it's profitable. I needed to do something with paranormal and investigating that would make a profit come back to me to not only fund me, but fund everyone involved. Have I ever wanted to be in a group and like do it that way? That sounds horrible to me, to be honest. And I don't, don't just don't let that discourage you because I think it's great for people out there that, that didn't get a shoe in like I did with Travel Channel. But like I would never in my wildest dreams want to run a group. It sounds horrific to me. It sounds like it would be very stressful. You'd have to maneuver working with different diverse of people, fights, drama. How are you going to make money off of it is my biggest thing. So yeah, that was, there is a distinguishable line where I do consider myself a filmmaker, period. Um, I am an investigator, but I am first a filmmaker, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, just to piggyback off of what Crystal said as well, you know, everyone's experiences are different. So definitely don't let that discourage you if you're mm -hmm. part of a paranormal group or things of that nature, because we all need to get experience from somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, running it and like being a part of a community group, you know, weird things can happen. And on Crystal's end, it's more of she was more wanting it to become a lifestyle, mm -hmm. a, an attainable lifestyle um, with a bigger message than just paranormal, which is also why we wanted to get into this discussion today. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about Travel Channel. Let's start from the beginning. Um, so, I mean, I started investigating, breaking into, like, I did illegal things when I was a kid. You know, like 15, 16 <laughs> years old. I did. I was that kid. Um, we all did, you know? Yeah. I had a boyfriend named Josiah. We're still friends to this day. You've met Josiah. Like, he was yep. so supportive of me liking scary stuff. Like, we would lie about our age to get in haunted houses, and they'd let us in. And, like, I was just obsessed with Halloween. Him and I would go. Um, he got a car before I did. And if we were bored on a Friday night, we were at the cemetery, like, looking for shadows and, like, creepy stuff. Like, it started that way. And then when I turned about 19, it was with Aaron from Paranormal Challenge. I've known Aaron since like seventh grade, the tall skinny guy. We um, invested in just some cheap like digital recorders. And we started going to the Stanley Hotel just like constantly because it was like an hour away from Denver. And we were like getting, I remember the first time I got my first EVP, it was like, oh my God, this shit's real. Like, I know you've seen other people do it and stuff, but, like, when you get your first piece of evidence or that first interaction, it's just like, <gasps> like, oh, my God, like, the other side actually does exist and you can get proof of it. So I, it became, like, I, I can only describe it as adrenaline and addiction. It's, like, it's the same as when people are doing motocross or BMX bikers or Tony Hawk with his skateboarding. Like, it's an obsession and it, like, gets your adrenaline going and... Um, you know, moving forward, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. It's funny because to this day, I'll like rekindle relationships from high school friends or whatever. And they're like, oh, so what are you doing, Crystal? Like, how's your life been? You know, and I'm like, oh, well, huh, I'm, I'm a filmmaker. And I'm scared to tell them. And then, <laughs> and then I tell them that I do paranormal. And they're like, oh, well, that doesn't like shock me. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I was weird back then and didn't, didn't know it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I tried to hide that like dark side of me a little bit. 
But, you know, I turned 24-ish is when I first applied for Paranormal Challenge. There was a uh, casting call that was out on, I think it was like Twitter at the time or something. It might have been Facebook. I ran across it one day and I sent all of our information in and we did not get a call back. Actually, like two or three submissions later, I didn't get a call back. And yeah. this was like September of the previous year before I filmed on set. And then February of the following year. A, um, I had had like a, like it was a life changing experience. I had lost my gallbladder. I had surgery on Christmas Eve. Um, and so I had this, ju- it was like, I was deathly ill over Christmas and like, it was just, cr- I just had like weird things happen. And so when February rolled around and I saw another casting for it, I was like, screw this. I'm going to try it again. And like, literally, I remember the casting for it. I found it. I was like, it was one of those late nights because all of us that are in paranormal are like insomniacs. Like I'm laying in bed. It's 4 a.m. I happen to see the casting call. I text Aaron and I'm like, dude, there's another freaking casting call. And he's like, don't apply. We're not going to get it again. Like we didn't hear anything before. And so I literally, and I've talked about this in bed. I sat in bed for like 20 minutes you know when you like have conversations with yourself and you're like every day every day of my life <laughs> you're like Fine. i should submit it and then there's another voice no don't submit it like you're just gonna fail again like no just who cares just submit it so i literally sat there for 20 minutes just like arguing with myself and i was because i was you know it's 4 a.m you're in bed you're in pajamas you want to sleep and i was yep. like just get your ass out of bed get on your laptop and submit it like what's the worst that can happen that you don't get it again who cares And so I did, I got up and I submitted it. And the next day at 10 AM, I got a phone call from the casting director that, um, we'd been chosen for an interview. And I was like, (laughs) I was, you must've been so shocked. I I didn't believe it. Honestly, I didn't believe it. And, um, I had never gone through like, that was like my first experience with professional production and like how they do things in the production company and the studio. And, I remember calling Aaron and I was like, oh my God, we got the interview. Like you have to come over like right now. And at the time we'd had a couple other friends that we weren't sure who was going to go with us. We just knew it was going to be Aaron and I, we needed three people total. And um, so Aaron and I went ahead and did the interview without the third person because we needed to still decide who we were taking. And we nailed the interview. We nailed the freaking interview. And um, I told <laughs> I told you this story last <laughs> week. You never, you didn't even know this story. I don't think I've even shared this. I was, uh, the, the casting director's like, okay, well, you know, Mr. Bagans is the one that has final say on who's, like, choosing. And he goes, Bagans. you'll know by tomorrow at t- 12 p.m. noon. So I will call you Colorado Mountain Time noon, um, and then you'll, like, you'll find out if you made it or not. I was like, okay. So I woke up, like, a total frazzled mess. My mom was like, God, you need to calm down, Crystal. Like, you're going to have a heart attack. So my mom's like, let's just go out to lunch. And, like, it was, like, 11. Let's go to lunch and, like, get some food. And I was so nervous. I couldn't even eat, I remember. And so we're at – we went to Chili's, if anyone's familiar with Chili's. Chili's are, like, big in Lakewood, Colorado, where I grew up. Like, bro, whatever. You know, like, let's go to Chili's. Like, everyone from high school worked at Chili's. And not me. I didn't. I was no. I'm not gonna go down that rat pole. You know. Um, but Brain so we itself. go to yeah. We go to Chili's and my phone rings. It's a number I haven't heard from before, and it's a New York um, area code because the production company was out of New York. And I had just ordered like a salad, and I I told you I like jumped up out of the booth. And I was like, the wait, like everyone's looking at me. Literally, I was like, oh my God, there's a number from New York calling. Like I was just panicked. And like, my mom's like, well, why don't you step outside? Cause like, you're making people look this way. You know what I'm saying? Like you're making a scene. So I, like, oh, girl. I ran, I ran out of the restaurant. They probably thought there was like an emergency or something, but I ran out of the restaurant. There was a sidewalk in, in front of Chili's and I answered the phone and it's the casting director. He's like, hey, Crystal, you know, I have some good news for you, but I just hang on. I'm looking for my papers. So at this point, I am just pacing back and forth, like up the street. Um, Sweating. Sc- like, <laughs> just like, and he's like, wow, it's really loud. Rhea. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm next to like a major street. I was on Wadsworth. And um, he goes, well, you made it. You made the cut. And I was like screaming. I was like, what does that mean? He's like, you're going to be on the show. And I just started screaming. And I was jumping. I mean, people that were driving by probably thought like, 
there was something wrong with that girl. Like, put her in a psych ward or something, you know? <laughs> and so I came running inside and told my mom, and um, and we made it. We made the cut. Yeah, it's it's really incredible, you know, when you trust your gut and you trust your intuition and you just kind of do the thing without really thinking about what will happen next, you mm-hmm. know? Kind of paves the way for, you know, really amazing future opportunities. And... You know, even more so when you're given that opportunity to interview and to really like put yourself out there, um, you know, authenticity reads. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you also have brought into Ghost Girl Diaries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you've built this on as well is being your authentic self. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just that's so incredible. That is absolutely so incredible. Well, it's definitely so, that that teacher, that lesson of the universe saying, like, okay, yeah, you got turned down three times, but, like, don't give up your dreams or something that could be your future just because you got turned down three times. Like, society teaches us failure is bad when mm-hmm. failure is actually one of our biggest lessons. Every mm-hmm. time you fail, it is a positive thing. And, and, like, we beat ourselves up because it starts in grade school. You get an F on your, you know, your test. And you think like the world's over, I'm gonna go home, my mom's gonna kill me, I failed my test. But what it teaches you is don't fail again, study harder, you didn't study enough, or or the next time in film or production, whatever you're doing with Paranormal Challenge, just try one more time. Keep trying, and honestly, like in my journey, I think 99% of doors have been shut. I've either had to build my own door or wait for that 1% to open. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting we're talking about this. And, you know, Crystal and I in the past have talked about divine timing as well. And maybe there are reasons behind, you know, it being rejected the first couple of times, not even having to do with you or Mm -hmm. your crew or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. But I read something online recently that said um, rejection is just redirection. It is. And it's just so powerful, you know, to think about that because it's true from what you said, you know, rejection is seen as such a negative and, you know, there's something wrong with you. But in reality, it's just perspective, Mm -hmm. you know, like what can I do to to do better next time? You know, how can I learn more? Because we're constantly evolving and learning new things, you know, no matter how far along we are on a path. So I had to get um, comfortable with being told no, like you have to be comfortable with being told no. And to the point where, like, now I'm like, whatever. If it's a no, it's a no. It doesn't work out. Whatever. Not not the end of the world. Thank you, Laura, for the um, bits. But, um, you know, like, that doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It just means that this particular path isn't right or you need to try and try again. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've been knocked down and I've had to figure out how to get back up. So yeah. I, I want to teach that to people that, like, whatever you want to do, it may not be paranormal, but, like, and I'm fighting something even harder that's female and paranormal, female and film. That's just like, it just makes it 400 times worse. Trailblazing is difficult. But anything you want to do, like, you're the one setting the limitations to your head. No one else is. It's true. It's very, very true. And just to do another little plug here, Ghost Girl Diaries, Love Diaries <laughs> Memoir. Here, if you haven't bought it, you should buy it. Jesus. It's just such a great example of, you know having hard struggles in life and still persevering and, and, and being successful in what you do no matter what with a different mindset and, you know, going through those struggles and it's shaping you into the, you know, amazing human being that you are today. Well, so, like I said, that year that, like, I, I got turned down three times and then we got it again. Another thing I didn't share was before I had the gallbladder surgery and I got, like, really sick and, I like, physically I was sick. I'd lost a bunch of weight. Um, I had been in a really terrible, terrible relationship. I had accidentally gotten pregnant. I talk about this in the book. I had lost the baby. It was a terrible miscarriage I dealt with. I was under like a tremendous amount of stress. I had a rare condition where my blood type did not match the guy's blood type. And then the baby that we created, my blood type was essentially rejecting the baby's blood type. And I was being told to abort the baby, and I was like, no, I, I'm going to keep the baby and, like, you know, whatever. And I got sick, deathly, deathly, deathly sick. And so that was when I lost the baby, then I had the gallbladder surgery. My life had done, like, a 360 within, like, six months, not even a year. I had gotten away from him. Like, he was evil, you know what I mean? Like, I had gotten a restart in my life, and then Paranormal Challenge happened, and I got the call, and it was like, it's weird like your life can just change in an instant like completely 
You have yeah. to choose, though. Do you want to stay the victim your whole life and be beat up and, like, claim, like, oh, poor me, like, all this happened to me? Or are you going to pick yourself up, even if it's scraping yourself off the ground? Because I've had to do that several times, more than several times. Are you going to pick yourself off the ground, take the positive out of it and, like, continue forward, move hard, accomplish something with it? Or are you going to sit and, like, pout in, like, your depression? Because trust me, if you think I haven't been through it, I have. Um, and I'm not talking clinical depression. Please don't get that. I understand clinical depression is different. I just mean like I've been through some dark times some dark shit and I chose not to be the victim and I chose to get up and continue and keep keep try, trekking forward no matter how hard it's going to be. It's true. And, you know, that's just such a powerful message, I think, for everybody, you know, and I hope that anybody listening here, um, you know, really, really hears this and, you know, allows it to, you know, transform their life and just think in a new perspective, you know, because everyone deals with situations differently. But when you hit that moment of saying, you know what, like, I'm, I'm no longer in this mindset, watch your life transform, mm -hmm. watch your life transform, it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So just to jump quickly back to Paranormal Challenge. Mm -hmm. Uh, what happened after that? Were you sent right out on set? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. So, uh, so paranormal. I was in Colorado. The episode that was filming was in Arizona. Mm -hmm. I later found out from one of the producers that apparently there had been another group that had already been cast for my episode, and they dropped out at the last minute, which was like what left the opening. So, literally what? within seven days to a week, I had to go to Arizona. I had no choice. Um, yeah. And I'd be there for a week filming from basically like Monday to Saturday or something like that. But we had to get there Sunday because obviously we had to be on set very early Monday. We couldn't travel on Monday. So it was basically an entire week situation. I wow. was um, at that time, I was currently I was no longer uh, a cosmetologist. Um, mm -hmm. I had stopped cosmetology for various reasons. I'm going to be just honest. The reason I stopped cosmetology was because you become a therapist when you're a stylist People yeah. pour their like emotions out to you, and I had a lot of wonderful clients, but I was really tired of hearing about their affairs with their husbands, and just, it was it was a lot. As an empath, I was just dead by the time I got home. So I ended yeah. up getting, um, I had a few jobs as an executive assistant, which they make really good money. I was making like $100,000 a year as an executive assistant. I was working for this hospital that was, um, it was a really fancy hospital in Colorado. We, I worked in a department where they hired and fired doctors. Um, I had to help check doctor credentials. I had to fly out doctors from different locations all over the United States. And um, I went, I, I was a very good worker, hard worker, had my own desk. I worked right under the, the main like boss lady. And when I found out about Paranormal Challenge, I couldn't offer um, like a, an advanced time to say, you know, it's going to be in two weeks or four weeks or whatever. I said, Hey, I'm, I have to leave in a week. I'm having, I didn't really say what it was, right? but I said, I need, um, I'm going to have to take a week off now. Take in mind, I hadn't taken any time off. I had been on time every day. Like I was, I was like, I didn't take any paid time off. Like I was that person. I worked hard and right. my, my boss was like, okay, well, I'm going to need to think about it. And she came to me the next day at my desk and she's like, I decided you're so valuable to the company like I can't let you leave for a week even if it's on like an emergency status and I was like Whoa. I was like I'm begging oh. you to let me leave for seven days like I just need seven days like it's not even seven. it's five days it's five work days I, I, I would right. prefer an extra day off to sleep but it's fine I'll deal like and she's like nope nope I won't do it and she goes if you're gonna leave you're gonna have to quit and I went home because obviously at that time I have a brand new car. I have a brand new Mustang. Um, it's $300 a month payment, you know. Um, right, right. I'm young, so my insurance is like $300 a month. Um, and I'm have, I have a townhouse, you know, that's like at that time $900 a month living, you know, bills. Up. Bills, yeah. Like, up. And mm -hmm. I went home to my mom, I went to my mother's house and I started bawling my eyes out and I said, they're not going to let me, um, they're not going to let me take the time off. And she's like, then you're going to have to quit, Crystal. And she's like, you're going to have to go. You cannot miss this opportunity in Arizona. So, I mean, I'm really lucky. I've always had, you know, although my dad wasn't extremely present in my life, my mother has always let me do my crazy adventures. So, essentially, I ended my lease. Um, I ended up selling my car um, and moved in with my mom and then found another job, basically, when I got back from Paranormal Challenge. She was like, just don't, don't let this ruin your opportunity. Like, this could be a life-changing opportunity, which she was very right. 
and um, I went to Arizona, and um, I, I got in the car. <laughs> I mean, it just happened so fast. So wild. I know. It, it's, that's so crazy. And at this point, I'm like already becoming obsessed with production because they're calling me for, because I'm in pre-production now. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they're calling me constantly and like, are you okay? Where are you at? Like, when are you going to be there? What's your, here's your time check-in. And now I'm becoming obsessed with the production side of things because Fast I love paced. this. Yeah. Yeah. Fast paced. Mm -hmm. It's important. You have things to do. You have to be somewhere. And I'm, I'm just becoming obsessed with it. So we get in the car, we rented a car and drove to Arizona. So I didn't put miles in my car. Um, and then we had another friend, which is obviously Garrison. Um, I actually met Garrison on world of Warcraft. I had known him for like 10 years on oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. And I so I, I had a few friends that had fallen out that were supposed to also go with us, but they just couldn't go at the last minute. And um, Garrison came from California and meet, met us there. And I was on set Monday morning, and it was just bam. Like there was, hey, bam. yeah. <laughs> and it was, I remember, like, so we first, we checked into the hotel on Sunday night. We shared a hotel that was like, you know, a two-bedroom hotel. It was like a sweet thing. And yeah. uh, the boys slept together and I slept by myself. And we got to set the next day. And um, Jerome's very strange anyway, Jerome, Arizona, because it, it sits on the side of like a mining town, you know, and the the yeah. big hotel, which used to be a, you know, it's a haunted hospital, sits like on top of the freaking like mine mountain. And I just remember driving up and, you know, I'm like, whoa, this is so weird. And then we get out of the car it says like cast park here you know and like then you feel important you're like yes awesome. and then we're we're walking up and there's like huge trailers of like just extension cords and cameras and lighting and i mean everything and people like pas and producers and like it's busy and i was like oh my god i'm obsessed i don't even know like i know it sounds stupid just seeing the cable cords like made me excited i just yeah. I, I was like, this is what I'm meant to do. This is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. It was like the catalyst to like your future mm -hmm. and like, you know, where you're headed now. Mm -hmm. So you're on set. I'm going to do a little spoil spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't watched Paranormal Challenge. I'm sorry. Um, your team won. Yeah. How was that feeling? We kind of knew that we had won already um, mm -hmm. because there was like a debacle that was going on behind set. We everything that you saw yeah. was like legit. Like we had to get our own evidence and gather it. But the other team had like recorded themselves and then tried to submit it as an EVP. Um, and like there was like a fight going on with the judges and it, it literally it was like an eight hour ordeal. It was literally supposed to go on for like an hour and it ended up turning into like an eight, 10 hour ordeal of like the judges arguing wow. of like who should win or who shouldn't. And wow. um, I just like I just knew I just knew that we had won. Um, I was really sad for it to end. I got very close. Evan um, and Jay were, Evan was my audio tech and Jay was my um, like camera tech. So we were assigned, and I got really close with them. Like they, we, I love them. I'm still like I follow them on social media still. Like, um, <laughs> and it was just, it felt like family. And I was like, this is like the family I've never had, you know, of this production. And. I want to recreate this somehow. Like it goes so much deeper than just paranormal. It was the film aspect of it, of like you're creating a story behind the lens of like your perspective. And then it's also the aspect of just a family unit. Like you're traveling together as a family, um, but yet you're not family, but you're really like close. So I wanted to recreate that. I, I just knew that that was what I was meant to do. Yeah. Wow. I can't imagine that, that feeling and all, all of this stuff happening at once and you kind of coming to these conclusions and, you know, your life just kind of blooming after that. Mm -hmm. So your team won. What happened after that? Did you go off and do interviews? Because this is kind of where, you know, and you've talked about this in the past where you worked your butt off, you got on this show, mm -hmm. you, uh, your team won, you led this team and your credibility skyrocketed. Um, you're really becoming really well known in the paranormal community and in film. Well, YouTube so, helped push that, but before YouTube, there was a there was a time before YouTube, which was so we get back from um, Arizona and I'm like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this on my own. I'm gonna figure mm -hmm. out how to do this on my own. Um, what what do I mean by that? I'm going to I'm gonna shoot my own film or pilot and submit it, and I'm gonna get my own series going. 
And yeah. um, so <laughs> we have a lot of, there's a long story with that. Um, <laughs> so uh, Garrison had come out from California um, to film. This was at, like, mm, maybe two or three months after Paranormal Challenge ended. So this was like September of 2011, a few months later. Um, mm-hmm. Now with the with that, for some reason, a lot of people had um, gravitated towards me that I never even met. So yeah. I, they must have like seen something in me energetically. So I made friends with the paranormal, the like famous paranormal community quickly after they saw my episode. Um, so mm-hmm. I was getting like social media invites to these like paranormal events like all over. I went to Scarefest a few times. Um, I was constantly at the Stanley Hotel, it, wherever these paranormal events were going on and these private parties, like I was, I was invited. I don't know why, honestly, because at that time I didn't even have YouTube behind my belt. So they, right. they must have seen or like, like energetically known I was going to make something of myself or something. Um, mm-hmm. And then in the meantime, I had uh, gone Garrison to fly out um, and then we were going to shoot a pilot. And the first shot that I had done was a mess, basically. The first, the first time I tried to shoot a pilot was um, it turned into a chaotic fight, essentially. Yeah. And Garrison left, and we actually haven't spoke since. I don't really have hard feelings towards him. I just think that, like, I was young, and I didn't know what I was doing, and I wasn't able to lead it properly. I think yeah. I was guessing from what I had seen, um, and I, I don't, e- I don't even know. Like I don't even remember what the fight was with Garrison. I think, I think it was mm-hmm. just the cost of what it was going to cost for production, and like they were fighting with me about like titles and like you know I want to be a cinematographer. I want to be the director. And I was like, who cares? We have to make it. Like we have to yeah. create the thing first before <laughs> you. Want- yeah, well, I, yep. like people have these illusions of like I want to be the director of it. I want this title. I'm going to go get an Academy Award. And you're like, okay, well you got to freaking make the thing first before you get there. You know. So mm-hmm. um, then, so Garrison had left. I didn't really know what to do. I was kind of like trying to figure out where to pick up. Um, then I, I met a person, I'm not gonna name his name. He was a film student at um, where I was going in Denver. I was going to um, see you Denver for film. And uh, he was like, yeah, I'm down for this pilot. Like, let's do this. Mm-hmm. And so I refunded personally an entire trip back to Jerome we were going to film again at Jerome um Uh. yeah it was and I alone like I paid for it myself now honestly I'm going to be real at that time it probably only cost about ten thousand dollars but that's a lot of money still you know what I mean like worse yeah you meet yourself Mm -hmm. like that was a lot lot. and so we drive to Jerome like so it's myself Aaron and this other person we get to Jerome and um this other person's going to be the main camera tech and uh I think he sees my like dri- my drive, but yet like doesn't want to put out the effort for the drive. And mm-hmm. so we like I met with Lonnie and like Renee who are down like they were on the episode they've been on like episodes with Jerome and I met with like Chris Altier who is the manager and I had this whole thing planned out and um, we uh, decided to investigate the old haunted, uh, it was like the 1800s one, there's like a smaller older one next to the big hotel and I had warned everyone I was like when you're in here like there's crawlers, there's dark creepy things don't go off by yourself and the camera tech that I'd hired he was an ex-veteran and he was tough quote unquote because he'd been to war I'm sorry but war is not the same as dealing with ghosts it's just not and he he floated off from us and didn't take a walkie, didn't take his cell phone, and ended up in the morgue of the old hotel. Oof. And Oof. we couldn't find him for two hours. When he, he walked in the morgue, he went in the body freezer. Now, the freezer doesn't still work, but the, the, the lock does work. Now, body freezers, I don't know if you're familiar, but they're very thick and heavy walls because they used to house dead bodies. He went in the freezer and an entity locked him in there for like two hours and we didn't know he was there. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. And so what? we were like, we were like, did he like leave? Did he get scared and leave? He was screaming and we couldn't hear him through the freezer. Ooh, that's nightmare. Because I'm that's talking like thick, like dense walls. You know, it, it, like I said, it wasn't cold, so he didn't like freeze or die. But like, thank God, because right. it's so old. But it, he's like, did you? When do you close me in there for fun? And I'm like, 
we didn't even know where you went. Mm-hmm. We didn't even know where you went. And wow. so um, he, he came out. He was so scared because he was locked in there in the pitch dark, no flashlight, just his, just his like, so and essentially one night was completely wasted on my dollar. Um, he yeah. was so scared he wanted to go back into the hotel and just sleep. So we were, we Chris had let us um, rent the suite for free. Mm-hmm. And um, we were in there and he essentially had um, a freaking meltdown, basically claiming that yeah. he uh was possessed and i or he was like feeling possession come on he kept saying that there was like a purple green entity f- watching him from the hallway and he started Whoa. he got on the bed he was screaming spinning in circles um i didn't film anything obviously i was i had holy water and some other stuff i was very inexperienced then i didn't know what i was doing um and we got him out of it and essentially the next day he woke up and he was like i am not staying here anymore we're leaving we're leaving and it wow. w- yeah, it was ten thousand dollars of my money that I wasn't going to get back. And he did have some footage of me and what we had little that we had done. And he was so mad at me because I took him to such a haunted location. He basically blackmailed me with the footage, and said he wouldn't give me any of the camera footage until I paid him an extra amount of money. <sighs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I've been blackmailed from the beginning with things, yeah. you know what I mean? But like, Ridiculous. if he if he ever puts that that footage anywhere on YouTube and I watch, I have people and my attorneys watch him like a hawk, like mm-hmm. I'll slap him with like a cease and desist and he doesn't have me, I never signed a document for him to be able to use my footage. Right. Um, he has signed one for me because obviously I was the owner of the company. But yeah, he was evil person, evil person. And that was when I started to realize how dark people could be and try to use you for money and use you for, he was really piggybacking us off of like what we had gotten from Paranormal Challenge. And unfortunately, um, it ended up, so we got back to Denver and this person was very toxic and dark and he convinced Aaron to turn against me, essentially. He said, he said, Aaron, you know, and once again, Aaron and I have been friends since we were 14. Aaron, right. he tells Aaron, like, oh, you know, like, Crystal owns this company and, like, you don't get a pay out of it. And I'm like, that's because I'm not even getting a pay out of it. Like, all the equipment, right. everything I was buying was on my dollar. Like, it wasn't made any other. Like, how, we don't even have a YouTube channel. Like, there's no income. Mm-hmm. And essentially, they they bullied me into a corner. Literally, I, we had a meeting and they literally tried to bully me as a woman saying that if I didn't sign over equal parts of the business to them, that they were going to walk. And Hmm. at that time, my mom had been an investor. She had been purchasing equipment for me. And so she came in and said, okay, you guys can have part of this, but you'll have to pay me back like the $7,000 I have invested in this. Well, they couldn't do that. So they got up and I never talked to Aaron again. It's just so crazy when you go through experiences like that to really see like their true intentions in the end Mm -hmm. you know like that's that's so wild it's not the first or last time i've had a friend stab me in the back over something stupid you know it's just i've i've been the one that's been in pain before and like i i like i understand people's trauma and Mm -hmm. i understand like what people go through when you become friends you learn things about people private things i would never throw someone else or their trauma under the bus because i've had it done to me Mm-hmm. I would never hurt or harm someone using their trauma against them the way that I've had people use it against me because it's, it hurts when it happens. And yeah. especially, like, I'm, I'm the Taurus. I'm a very loyal person, like, fresh to the death type of person. Like, ride or die to the end. And um, that hurt really bad. That hurt, especially because I'd been friends with him since eighth grade. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And I feel like, you know, when you're doing a project like this, especially with, you know, some that were already involved in film, I feel like there would already be an undertone in communication and understanding that this is, you know, we're all doing this to just like help each other out and to be a part of this project and like point blank, you know, well, like clear cut from the beginning. Aaron should have so known have- I didn't have a lot of money to really at that time to invest. Right. You know what I mean? And this other it's person, true. I think, saw us as... We were on TV, Crystal's got a... I've always lived a nice life, but I've also worked very hard for it. So That's people true. see me on the outside and they're like, oh, she's got money. And it's like, because I like work 24-7, understand that. 
Like, nothing right. has been handed to me. And people just think they can, like, scoop in and just, like, swipe things from you. And it, it sucks because you, you lose a friendship. And, it's um, true. Yeah. It's sad. Well, and you always just lay all your cards on the table. You've mm-hmm. always been that type of person. And you've, you've always been like that with even me and anybody you work with. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just really blows my mind when you know, people act like this because it's also a two-way street. If they have questions or concerns, they could also come to you mm-hmm. after you've already laid the cards on the table. So, mm-hmm. Well, this other Don't person was just convinced I was made of money and that if I yeah. signed over three ways, I'm like, oh, I mean, I'll sign the business over. It's not worth anything. Like, it literally <laughs> yeah. was not worth anything. Right. Like, when I was, like, doing my taxes at that time, it was like I was having a loss because I was buying equipment, you know what I mean? And not $1, making... $1,000. I, I mean, so much money. And um, that sort of started this. Uh, but once again, I'm not going to take the negative out of it because I learned a lot from those experiences and what not to do and what kinds of people not to work with. And um, it started this this path of the next chapter was filming several different pilots that I actually did finally get to film. So it, it, yeah. it, I did win sort of in the end, just not with that particular group of people. It's so true. It's so true. So now to talk about the YouTube channel, mm-hmm. where so you filmed several pilots after mm-hmm. um, Paranormal Challenge mm-hmm. and you're really invested, like really immersing yourself in film and just like doing the thing. When did YouTube come around? Um, like when did you start to have that idea for your YouTube channel of Ghost Girl Diaries? I made another couple of friends at film school that were mm-hmm. like really dug the paranormal thing. And one of the pilots is on our channel. Uh, Matt was was someone that I had worked with. It's on I think it's under uh, Gold Camp Road or something like that. Um, and you know, Matt and I were friends. We no longer speak, and we don't speak because. Um, he wanted the title director, yet he had no experience with paranormal. And it, once again, I was just sick of the titles. Like, why do we have to have titles at this time? I just want to shoot this and get it done. Like, you're going to do camera work. Can't you just stick with that and then let me decide how it's going to unfold or, like, what the storyline uh. is? It was always about who has the biggest balls and who could lay it out on the table. And I was like, and I'm a female. And they were like, oh, not you. You know what I mean? Like, you're a girl. So at this point, I'm really experiencing on the not even the film side of just humans don't like like men humans don't like females in power and it sucked and so I did shoot that pilot with him um after we shot it uh he was like you know I mean this is like 2012 13 ish he's like there's some people I know that have like started a YouTube channel and like it's really like taken off and like you should try it or something you know and Mm -hmm. um I was like, "Mm, I don't, you know, like at that time, I didn't even really know how to edit. And I started taking editing classes in film school um, in Denver, trying to figure out how to how to edit. And I was like, oh, it's actually kind of easy. And um, I started the YouTube channel in about 2013, just on suggestion. I, um, I don't know. It just happened. You know what I mean? Like my original (laughs) videos are, you'll never find them. They are burning in hell somewhere. Um, and I hope that they never come out. Like, I hope to God nobody downloaded them and they pop up. They were horrendous. Like my she blew them up. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> they're I, they're literally not even on private on my channel. Like they're I mean, deleted. To be, to be fair, though, I mean we all start somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, like oh, it's okay. Like we get to where we are now based off of you know the steps we took to get to here. So. I don't even know. Like I, I don't. I mean I was. Oh, so I was. We were gonna post the pilot on YouTube for sure. And um, I was fine with that. But then I was like, but like, I, I need to, I started researching YouTube and like, you have to upload consistently. And I was like, what am I going to do? And so I started talking about like my experience with Paranormal Challenge and being on set. Let me tell you, my first videos, I am like actually literally sitting at like one of those $30 Walmart card tables. I have, like, a backdrop up, but it's, like, literally, like, a piece of fabric with, like, um, like, sequins. No lighting. I was, like, not confident in myself. I'm wearing a hat. You can, like, hardly see me. I'm, like, literally like this. And, um, they blew up. I don't even know how that happened, honestly. I don't even know how it happened. 
And so then it started going well. And I was like, oh, my God, I have to, like, do something better. So I, I, like, started morphing it slowly. And then it just became a thing. And then slowly I ended up, like, getting rid of those old ones because they were just so bad. But, like, honestly, practice makes perfect. Me practicing in front of the camera made perfect. Me practicing using the camera made perfect. Me practicing editing made perfect. Like, there's a reason for the journey of, like, how it sort of unfolded. So, yeah, it just became a thing. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know how. That's so amazing. So when did you start to see, like, what video was the one that kind of, like, skyrocketed your YouTube channel? Like, what kind of, um, I guess, like, theme did you end up going with with your channel? So Ghost Adventures, I was doing, like, reviews on Ghost Adventure. I I don't even know where that came from either, because that wasn't even my original videos. Like, once again, you'll never see my, like, OG videos. Um, They're gone. They're gone. (laughs) And I hope that they stay there, okay? Um, they, uh, my Ghost Adventures videos, like, they, I think people, like, I hate, I'm just going to say it, because, like, there's yeah. no filter. I think people enjoyed that I was tearing Zach apart. Yeah. From, like, a production standpoint, because now I'm in film school, like, I'm training, I've, I've been hired on set, like, in Denver for different productions. Like, I really, like, have this down, like, I've got this down. And um, I'm, now I'm watching some of his stuff and I'm critiquing Ghost Adventures. And he actually appreciated it. Um, he'd reach out to me and be like, you know what? Someone's got to keep me in check. And it actually, I think, in the, in the end made him a better filmmaker because he would watch my reviews and he would apply things that I saw that were a problem. So it was very interesting dynamic. Most people get, like, offended by that. But he actually took that information and, like, ran with it. But um, it was... a you need an outside perspective mm-hmm. to, like freshen it up spruce it up you know i agree well and i think it was different perspective too because it was like a female in paranormal what is this this is kind of new and she's very one thing i'm gonna tell everybody is like if you want to do anything with your life you have got as a woman and i know this sucks but like i have i've had to learn this the hard way and it's taken me a long time to learn this as a woman in this world where equality still does not exist you have to lead with masculine energy so what i mean by that is i cannot go into my negotiations be like oh my name's crystal i'm very polite and i'm like this you know i'm an executive producer no (laughs) i have to go in and be like hey guys what's up i'm crystal this is what i've done this is what i have this is what i want what are you going to offer me because that's how men do deals. I had to learn how to talk like a man. Um, mm. And, and you know, so, balls. It, it does, it sucks, <laughs> but like yeah. you get more respect that way, especially from men. And because mm-hmm. they look at me like, oh, blonde girl with like makeup mm, and glitter. Mm, let me hear what you have to say. And like you're not automatically like, just for my appearance stereotype, they're not gonna take me serious. Um, right. But, um, yeah youtube just blew i don't know like and then then like i I did a video about um paranormal state and that one blew up and then i did another norm uh, another video about nick groff getting fired and that one's almost at a million views right now by itself and it just still commenting on that one yeah i just i don't know i really don't know what i did honestly like i don't you know and you look back and i i really hope at the end of the day that it's me that people liked and that's what kept them coming back it wasn't necessarily what i was saying and they were like you know what this bitch is smart like she has a lot a lot of good things to say and i hope that was what kept bringing them back um but i think everybody especially people that are og like they've seen me evolve from like where i started to like where i am now and that's all that's what it's all about on any journey is the growth and Mm -hmm. looking back and saying wow i've evolved so much and Mm -hmm. being proud in that moment and it's again like you know authenticity reads and you were speaking your truth and critiquing from your standpoint very just like point blank and and no wishy-washy it is what it is and that's fine um and i think people really resonated with that i think people were kind of shocked because in a world of especially with women where we're made to feel like we need to like you know bow down or be nice or be kind or whatever you know you're like no screw that i'm gonna speak my truth and Mm -hmm. this is my take on it and no hate but this is just from a film perspective and uh yeah it did it skyrocketed well i had studied two like different paranormal shows while i was in film school in denver and then i obviously transferred to um, las vegas to finish but i was um talking with some of my professors and stuff and they were saying like you should you know compare different shows like different shows do different things and um, what kind of, you know, like, you, you not only know the, like, uh, production side, but you know the paranormal side, like, mute the two, and so they kind of gave me inspiration for it, but I remember saying, like, you know, 
the biggest EP in the business, the best show, whether people want to, you can say you hate Ghost Adventures, fine. It's still the biggest, best show in the business. He is the biggest shark. I have to, I have to jump in the pool and fight the biggest shark. That's the only way I'm going to get anywhere. Um, I have to go straight for the top. I can't like, I don't even care about all these little ones. And I think that that was like really resonated with people too, to be like, Oh my God, she's like, a lot of people give me shit. Like, Oh, you just support ghost adventures. No, first of all, people wanted to see those reviews. And second of all is that I was critiquing it. Yeah. It was not always positive. Believe me. Believe me. Oh, of course not. You were speaking your truth. Mm -hmm. You were being your authentic self and you know, also applying what you've been learning in film, which is really admirable, Mm -hmm. you know? So, YouTube's going really, really well. Mm -hmm. Numbers are going awesome. What happens next? When when did you start to, you know, the whole situation occurred with the channel Mm -hmm. that we're not going to mention due to reasons of things and you mean the person that's that. now fighting ufc for some ungodly reason yeah that oh, person you know gag. Um, so was that like the next phase of the channel and and you kind of segueing into creating the pilot that we filmed the channel yes but like i had gotten a couple years went by um and i'd gotten hired through pilgrim studios um mm-hmm. they actually gobbled a bunch of us up for, it wasn't just me um from like a uh, paranormal challenge and a lot of us were studying under Mike's, uh, which is one of the EPs there. Um, he was recruiting us for different productions. He was picking our brains for what kind of productions we wanted to do. Um, I was helping with on the creative end. Um, I think he also knew that I had worked with Zach and wanted his, he was using me, you know, for like, he wanted Zach's knowledge. At the time, yeah. I didn't know that because I was young. And, um, and he created like a new series that I was supposed to be a part of, which was Killer Contact. There's no shame in saying that. Um, I uh, got a contract. I was my next major contract deal was with Killer Contact. And um, I was supposed to go to Europe for like eight weeks and film. And um, he had hired some people that were doing some uh, questionable moral things, such as um, Greg... Who, who was on another episode. He was on the, the ship episode of Paranormal Challenge. Greg was wanting to, like, taunt the spirits by using a noose, and I just thought it was really disrespectful. Um, I, I'm just to be honest. Greg was a misogynistic ass, and we didn't get along. And I don't have a problem saying that because I've said it to his face. And I was, like, deathly afraid of leaving to film with him for eight weeks because I was going to knock him out at some point because it was just, like... He was constantly just badgering me about being a female and paranormal and, like, I was a a wuss and he used, like, derogatory terms, derogatory terms. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't tolerate people talking to me like that. So it was more than that. Like, there was a lot of – it just, like, you know, as much as I, like, enjoyed and I learned when I was with Pilgrim and working there and I loved being in L.A., it was, like, that gut instinct of just knowing this is not meant to be your next step in, in your path. And, um, and that's sad because like not a lot of people get offers for that kind of contract, you know, like I just knew it wasn't right. I just knew it. I'd been on the phone crying for like two days, like talking to all my friends and like mentors, what should I do? And the day before I was supposed to leave, um, I cut my contract with Pilgrim and I left. Yeah. Yeah. And then I kept, well, ca- I kept going with YouTube. Like, and then I was getting, in the meantime, I'm still getting hired in you while I'm doing YouTube and like the channel's growing and getting bigger and it's getting no- notoriety from people and I'm getting hired to do like these side gigs and I'm going to LA and like, I'm even doing editing gigs and I'm like involved with creative, co- I'm getting paid for this. And I'm like, yes, like this is, I just, I wanted to become freelance, but like, I didn't even have to try anything. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it just kept going, and then I kept the channel going, I kept the channel going, and um, I had met Blake in between, who, I mean, people don't even realize I was married the whole time I was on YouTube. I keep my personal life extremely private because I don't, it's nobody's business, I don't want anybody to know. And he helped fund um, some pilots that did fairly well. Um, but once again, I, I ran into some other hiccups, not with him, but with um, people that we had hired. I hired... Uh, one person, let's see, let's go back and start from the beginning. I, f- I hired this one guy that um, ended up showing up to set with drugs. And at this point, I'm taking the production pretty serious. And so I had to send him home because he had he brought drugs to set. And I was like, you can't do that. Like, this is not, we're borrowing this place to film at. You can't show up with drugs here, you know? Like, 
Then I had this other girl that um, was was a lesbian, which is fine. There's no problem with that. But she always had drama going on with her girlfriend. I'm talking like her girlfriend was involved in like violent fights and like they're bailing each other out of jail. And I was like, I can't, this is, I can't do this. I can't do this. So I had to let that person go. Then move on to the next one. I hired this one girl and she like tells me out of the blue. She's like, Oh, I'm, I'm a recovering heroin addict. And I was like, would have been nice to know that when I interviewed you. And I was like, how long have you been like sober? And she's like, Oh, forever, like three weeks. And I was like, three weeks sober. Okay. Like, I'm just, Uh, you know, like this could ruin things mm -hmm. for me. And then I hired, um, this other girl who I loved because she was a mixed race, but she started posting drug related stuff on her social media and I'm trying to promote the pilot and I'm scared that like production companies are going to watch her social media and I'm scared that I'm not going to get signed just because this person like is reckless and I confronted her about it and she was basically like I don't care I'm going to live my life and do what I want so I had to cut ties with her so I've had a lot of like trials and tribulations with people the same thing I have learned up until this point with people that are no longer with Ghost Girl Diaries is this lesson they think that fame comes instantly they think that they're going to sign with Ghost Girl Diaries and it's going to get signed and you don't have to even lift a finger. You don't have to help in any way, shape, or form. And you're going to get rich and famous overnight. And that is not how this works. It's not how it works. It's a lot works. of hard work. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work. And, you know, when you're working in a team environment, like any anything, um, you know, everyone is, is kind of expected to do their part. And, you know, not that that's going to be an overhaul and like overloaded with work. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, a little bit goes a long way when it's spread between a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. And when it's not, um, that's when things become really stressful. And, mm-hmm. and it's almost kind of like an energy of feeling taken advantage of mm-hmm. is kind of how it would make me feel. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it's so wild. But it is, it's part of also you know, look at your journey and how much you've grown and the experiences and the opportunities you've had. And you've talked about this in the past too, where, you know, you work hard and it looks easy Mm -hmm. to people on the outside, but it's not, that is not the actual reality of it. And of course the experience is fun while you're filming and everything in between and after, but you know, there are other situations that happen that people don't know about Mm -hmm. that can really kind of disrupt the process and make it not enjoyable. And, And that's, difficult especially when you're doing something that you're meant to enjoy because you enjoy doing it you know Mm -hmm. hard to find those people that really resonate with you in your path and that are kind of on like the same wavelength I wear many hats I mean myself and like I literally probably do the job of like 25 people like not even kidding you and um, it's it's tiring and so then when I have someone that's on that's like dead weight and baggage I'm tired and I want to I'm done with it I'm tired You know, Mm -hmm. like I and if you don't understand like how the production thing works and like how teamwork orientation works, then you shouldn't be here. Right. You shouldn't be here. I'm not trying to do a little thing. You know, like I was I was actually talking to Blake about this the other day because I was telling him about contracts and like negotiations and stuff. And he goes, you know, here's the problem, Crystal. He goes, you know, you've had contracts. You have had 30. I have probably not 30. That's probably exaggerating. I would say I've had. 15 to 17 contracts with different production companies okay like not recently like throughout my career okay and the reason they've fallen through is so many different reasons i cancel them they cancel them whatever okay now a lot of people would be like oh my god like you're ungrateful you have that many contracts and you still don't have a series and blake said that's because you want a prime series you don't want just i don't want to just become another uh, Morgans of Shepherd Town or whatever Shepherd's Town, or you know, just like a fly by night two season show. I'm wanting longevity. Do I want to go as long as Ghost Adventures twenty two seasons? Hell no, hell no. That's exhausting. exhausting. No, <laughs> yeah. I can't even believe he wants to go that long. Like I want to retire or like do something else. Like no way in hell do I want to go on 22 seasons. That's ridiculous. Honestly, I think he should have retired at 15 or 16, but good for him. But like, you know, the point of it is, is just, I want longevity. So I I have always shot for extremely high goals. I want very high goals. I'm very specific with what I want. And that's why I've had so many contracts is I wasn't specific with what I wanted. 
Yeah. The universe will give you what you want. Manifestation is real. It exists. You have to work for it. You can't just think yep. of something and expect it to show up. You have to work for it. However, if you're not specific, it will show up the way you, you requested it from the universe, which is why I had so many contracts that were not right for me. They weren't right for me because I wasn't specific enough. And to be honest, at some of those times, I didn't know what I wanted. Exactly. And they were just stepping stones for more growth mm -hmm. and learning. You know, it's it's one of those things, like you said earlier, like you don't really see them as downfalls anymore because mm -hmm. it's led you to where you're at today mm -hmm. with the knowledge you have today. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's crazy. It's it's hard to find a group that resonates kind of at your level mm -hmm. and your energy level, you know, of just like team or like legitimately team oriented. Well, I know? got like Kat's amazing. She's helped me more than anybody. Kat's been involved hey. in negotiations, which I think would be uh, interesting to touch on that, too. Elfie, yeah. it just knows. Like, Elfie's great. She does our research. She's been involved. In. She's 36 episodes of Paranormal State under her belt. Like, she just, she is, she's our elder. She knows. Like, she's the zen one. Like, she's got it down. And then Shaylee, oh, she's hustled, and she has a huge following on social media. She understands the entrepreneur life, where a lot of other people that were involved didn't understand that and didn't understand what hard work meant. And it's been really nice to have people. It's been crazy because, like, Shaylee's been involved since March, and I've been distributing, like, workouts to all of us kind of evenly. And every, I haven't had a problem. And it's been so weird because it's like I don't have to go behind anyone. I can trust you guys that it's going to get done, and I don't have to question it. And that's yeah. that sense of community, belonging, and family that I've, like, wanted to create since I was on Paranormal Challenge. It's so true. And, you know, I feel like through all of the hardships, you know, this is eventually what it manifested into mm -hmm. was exactly what you were looking for. And, you know, it's your vibe does attract your tribe mm -hmm. for sure. And you've just got to weed them out. You know, <laughs> just got to keep it's going. It's true. The but, you know, it, this this journey hasn't been easy, though. Like, I can admit that I've had some times where I've literally like been suicidal and I've wanted to die because it's been so hard, you know, like mm -hmm. I, um, recently, you know, we, we took some time off. We have been, I, I've, I've already, I've said this before. We've been in negotiations for the past six months. Negotiations are now coming to an end, um, positive outcome, but we're not going to talk about it because I think that there's people out there that would wish us, um, to not succeed. And so I'm not going to allow that energy to interfere with us. Um, however, um, I did take a few weeks off because negotiations have been very stressful and Kat's been involved with them. And um, the last like three or four weeks, I lost an aunt. I lost my my professor who was like my number one like go to like he was so supportive in my life. And then I had a family member that almost died on my dad's side um, who was in a really horrific car wreck. And um, it wasn't just one thing, it was like compiling and it was like we're so close to tasting success yet I got so so depressed and just, I, I mean I wouldn't have a plan to do anything but I just have moments where this, this path has been so hard that I just don't want to be here anymore. And I mean that in a sense of I don't support suicide, obviously, and that's not and I, I've had there I've been in and out of therapy because this path's been so hard, but I have hit so many walls over and fucking over where they tell me you're a woman, you can't do it, you're a female, you can't do it. Why? Why? Why does it matter what my gender is? Like I was even comparing it to Kat the other day of like no hate to the Tennessee Wraith Chasers, you know, but they've had quite a few seasons. They have the show Haunted Towns, and they did something else. But, like, let's be real. They don't dress real nice. They're southern boys that are, like, farm boys. They have ripped jeans, pilly shirts, holy t-shirts, and, like, you know, old, like, flannels, worn-out hats. They talk southern. And they're like, we're going to go get us some ghosts and blow those ghosts up. They got a show, okay? We didn't get a show because we get picked apart. When I submit our information or our stuff to go into negotiations, they pick us apart piece by piece. Kat almost got cut in negotiations in January from a different negotiation I was in because they didn't like her social media. They didn't like her social media. There's no reason for it. Why? Look at the Tennessee right. Wraith Chasers. How did they get signed so many times in so many shows? Like Nobody picks them apart because they're men. Yeah. Chanel... I wasn't going to get a deal when Chanel was involved. 
everybody that I had been in negotiations with when Chanel was involved, they didn't like her teeth. I, I swear to God, I'm not kidding. They wanted her to go get her teeth completely redone with veneers. Who has the money for that? That's $70,000 for top and bottom. You want me to wait for her to go spend $140,000 on her teeth and then you'll sign us because we're women? Like the unjust in this is just unbelievable. Or like, mm -hmm. oh, or constantly, Crystal. Crystal, you're going to be signed and nobody else. That's not the point of this. That's not the point of this. And so, I mean, I've hit so many blocks. There's sometimes, like, I just haven't wanted to be here. Because, like, I don't want to just be a YouTuber for the rest of my life. That was never the goal. And, yeah, if you're ever thinking of, like, ending your life, please go get help. But, like, I never got to that point. It was just depression of, like, I am never going to obtain my goal because I just keep hitting wall after wall because I have a vagina like straight up that's the reason mm -hmm. I see yep. all these other men getting signed and these these shows and these series coming out and like always a male executive producer and when I'm trying to get in there like a the only reason Amy Bruni did it which I give her mad props for is she funded it herself she had enough mm -hmm. money from Ghost Hunters franchise that she could fund it herself you get it girl I however am not a millionaire I cannot fund it myself so in order right. to negotiate with a studio, with a production company, um, with investors, you have to ask for millions of dollars. And they yeah. literally say, oh, I don't like Kat's social media, no. Oh, I don't like Chanel's teeth, nope, sorry. Oh, we'll take you and nobody else. But then we want 51% control of the company so that we can turn it into another cheesy paranormal show that everybody effing hates because you're a woman in executive producer role that's in control and we don't trust your outlook mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and imagine like you get expunged like you get tired you you negotiate with every production company and you're just like i'm hitting wall after effing wall nobody's listening to me i zach went and got ghost adventure signed he did a pilot he shot with aaron and nick he took it to two agents one of the agents shut him down the other one signed it immediately you know what i had to do to get the series signed i had to have 10 years of youtube under my belt 170 shows a podcast a successful twitch channel a book and everything else in order for them to want it why did it take me having to serve an actual product on a freaking platter in order for someone to pay attention to me just because I'm a female right because you're a woman you have to prove yourself and that's bull that's bull crap it's that's not fair crap. it's not fair it's not it's not right it's not right at all it's it's just so crazy even to just like think about the journey and the hard work and the blood sweat and tears and money that you've put into you know not only the project that we've been working on but also before this like hundreds of thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. lots of money and time and you know broken relationships and trust and like it's not an easy road it's an ugly road when you have big dreams well, and you've always been really transparent about that and when people know your success or know how much um work you have put into things they want to take it from you they want to piggyback off of you and they want to put you down yet they wouldn't right. be able to put in the same amount of where's your 170 videos on youtube then Where's your millions of views that it took me forever? You know how much money it cost me to run, get the podcast running? Like, then yeah. you do it. If you can do so much better, by all effing means, the door is open, do it. If you can do it better than me, by all means, please do. You know, it's like, true. I've always supported women in film, and but, like, people don't understand is, like, the, the female executive producer, the only one involved is Amy Bruni, and she does it great. But yeah. like, mm -hmm. I want a hit successful show season after season, and that does not exist right now. And no. that's and because it's ran by men over and over again. It's true, and like, you know, you're here to create a whole new opportunity for women in film and in paranormal, and you know, D all of the above. And you know, another thing I want to point out, too, is that, you know, you have every right to be extremely confident in the hard work that you've put in because of how infuri infuriating it is being a woman in film mm -hmm. and having those experiences. But people that might not necessarily have that same mindset for some reason paint it as like cockiness and mm -hmm. that is not it like this is the this is the disclaimer because i have witnessed it and seen it myself in regards to crystal like 
you know, she's allowed to talk about the things that she's passionate about and the things that she's worked really hard on. That doesn't make her a bitch. That doesn't make her cocky. That makes her proud of the hard work that she's trying to not do just for herself, but for everybody else around her and for the future. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there because, you know, as somebody that's worked with Crystal one-on-one for Gillette, next month will be three years, actually. Holler, three years. You know, it's been such a joy. And, you know, I, I, it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad to, you know, have people just say these things that genuinely have no idea, you know, about her life. And, you know, there are some that will just never know or choose not to listen, mm-hmm. you know, but that shouldn't, that that is just not right. That is not right. Like you have every right to stand in your power and say, I am proud of what I have accomplished and I'm going to prove that in the future. Well, I think that Period. someone just said, so how do we change the mindset? Someone's going to have to bust the door open and clearly it's going to be me. I can't yeah. imagine someone other than me starting over from scratch to where the, I've gotten to the point where I'm at now. So once mm-hmm. the door is busted open, I'm going to be a huge voice for this and that will create change. Um, mm-hmm. But yet with the cockiness side of things, I don't th- like. I don't think women should tear their women down no matter what. Exactly. I think exactly. that, you know, like, I mean, I'm a pro creator for, like, everyone, everybody being included. I'm half Native American, indigenous, like, my family suffered genocide. Like, Kat's family is obviously from Mexico. She's half Hispanic. You have Shaylee, who's half Asian, from Vietnam. You have um, Elfie, who's LGBTQ. Like, women should, we're already torn down enough. We don't need to keep tearing each other down worse. Um, I got mad one time because uh, something had happened. Um, it was Chelsea from Comic Chelsea from uh, D- uh, what was it? Destination Fear was Destination going to Comic Con. There was another yeah. girl from the Holzer Files, and then there was who else was going? Katrina? Was it Katrina? Katrina. Mm-hmm. And they went. Um, so I've had a lot of producers screw me over from Travel Channel because they they pretend like they want to like sign the series, and they end up not signing the series. They don't. Um, they just use me for like ideas and it worked the first few times and then it didn't work after that but so I just don't I know producers from Travel Channel like watch my every move because they're like oh Crystal's like full of good ideas let's just take them from her but um, the producers knew that I was pushing for female empowerment in paranormal and they decided to have a panel at Comic Con with Chelsea um, from Destination Fear Katrina Whitman and um, the other like psychic girl from the Holzer Files And they talked about their oppression at being women in paranormal. First of all, I wasn't tearing them down specifically. I will not tear down another woman. That's not my bag of tea because I'm trying to open the door for everybody in this industry. However, if someone should be talking about who has suffered trying to make something of themselves in paranormal, I don't think it should be Chelsea, who her brother's Dakota, who got in with Ghost Adventures. Holzer Files Psychic is re- is related to Holzer, so she didn't suffer getting in. And bless Katrina's heart, but my God, she's been on more series than I can count. So she's okay. She's taken care of. You want to talk about someone, a female in paranormal, actually suffering and trying to get somewhere and get some get the door open? Let me tell you a thing or two. That's what I was mad about. It wasn't them specifically. It was that Travel Channel set them up for my narrative when I have been the biggest outspoken person for women in paranormal for years because of what I've experienced. It's true. And it's no... A uh, secret to anybody and to, you know, those of you listening and have followed GGG for so long that, you know, Travel Channel has a habit of taking some of Crystal's ideas. A habit. It happens um, constantly. Jesus. Mm-hmm, constantly. Mm-hmm. I yep. should be an executive producer for Discovery at this point, not even Travel <laughs> you Channel. You really should. <laughs> you really should. Uh, it's just wild, you know, and yeah, it's not to discredit, you know, those women and their experiences, but, you know, the fact is the fact. You know, they have their shows. Crystal's still hustling after creating an empire already to to create it, mm-hmm. you know? I, I mean, it blows my mind. Mm-hmm. It blows my mind. So, so after, you know, the, the Paranormal channel, like, blew up, it was great. You know, he who mm-hmm. shall not be named that, you know, is came along. the Laho yeah. with the gun, with the Pahal, if you know who I'm talking about. Because I will never say his name again, because I really don't care yeah. whatever happens to him, honestly. But, um, but I literally, <laughs> like, I haven't made income on the channel since. Yeah. 
It's I have you. You've okay. seen my AdSense. Like literally, you've seen my AdSense. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I am considering making a second channel at some point. It's not going to happen right now. Just where we'll mm -hmm. start uploading there and start. I think that the algorithm is so squashed. Like I can't find. It's just. It is what it is. We're going to use crazy. TikTok to try to build, and we're going to go from there. Um, gonna but be... then after that. Well, what? Yeah, when did like the pilot like idea come into play? So like you had the YouTube thing going on, you know, the whole thing with Paul going down. Um, when was your idea sparked to create like a crew and like a team? That's when I I had come in about three years ago. <laughs> Don't say his ago. name, say Paul, okay? Like <laughs> Paul. Paul. <laughs> um, I can't believe he's doing UFC. My God, he just. I just he wish he'd go away and just not come back out. You know what I mean? Like he's never held accountable ugh, for anything. Him and his brother, for that matter. Um, oh gosh, yep. Um, which, by the way, I'm gonna go to that forest someday, and I'm gonna film there, dedicated to that right. mofo. Okay. Mm -hmm. Without filming like a dead crap. body, you know. Um, oh my gosh. So the next phase was, you know, the the channel tanked, and um, I lost money. I just lost a lot of money. Like I wasn't making income off. I haven't made income off the YouTube channel in years, honestly. Um, right. Like a hundred dollars here and a hundred dollars there, but it's been squashed since. Um, so I was like, okay, next step is I feel like this is the universe telling me to find the right people in my life and to like move forward and, and do the thing, do the legit real thing. And mm -hmm. um, found the people that, you know, two people are no longer here. And um, I decided to go shoot, shoot a pilot. Um, at the time I was going through some really heavy things at home that nobody knew about when, uh, you know, when we did pre-production, we planned it, we found the location for the pilot, we get ready to go. And, uh, simultaneously the universe was like let me give you a bunch of really hard things that you have to overcome while you're shooting the pilot it's and no deal. and right. if you accomplish this maybe you'll get like something on the on the other side so essentially my mom almost died three times now once again this is as we're shooting the pilot we're getting ready to shoot the pilot my mom has a triple bypass. She has horrible health issues. She's in the hospital constantly having surgery on her deathbed. She is the only family I have left. My mother is my world. We are very open in communication about death on the other side. If she goes, we've had those talks, but she's my best friend. She is, it is a unique relationship when I'm an only child and a single parent. It is a very unique relationship. We survived when I was a child you know like my dad left us and she she did the best she could but we struggled and I think that when you overcome serious survival struggles together like your best friends like so my mom's my best friend we're getting ready to shoot the pilot and my mom's like on her deathbed and I'm just like oh my god like what are we gonna do like I'm I'm beside myself ask cat I'm beside wild. myself it, was wild. it gets to the point where I'm having to give her IVs and all this stuff like I and I I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to like take care of her and help her I don't have family to call in to help me I'm by myself and um in the meantime I'm having severe relationship issues that nobody knows publicly and to top it all off my dog that is my absolute best friend I've had him since he was a baby he has been sick and he's going into liver failure and I have spent fourteen thousand dollars did you hear what I just said I spent call me crazy I don't care I spent fourteen thousand dollars trying to save my dog from liver failure and he died one week before we left to film the pilot my life was in effing shambles I am not gonna lie like, and I was worried about my mom leaving, like, you know, like, she's, she's been sick, like, my dog is my life, my dog, like, my, my, I don't have kids, my animals are my children, I treat them like they are my children, and it was like the, like, I was processing it as the loss of a child, I called Kat, and Kat's like, we need to call off the shoot, call off the pilot, it's, you're going to, you're going through too much, Crystal, don't overwhelm yourself to just just you need to process and I, so I'm like we're a week before the pilot I'm like should I call it off should I not should I do it the last minute I'm like I don't care just do it let's just, let's just do it so everybody flies out to go shoot the pilot um, I, in considering the mental state that I was in at that time because once again I was considering unaliving myself because of all of the trauma and stress was going on in my life I think the pilot came out pretty damn good yeah it did. It's magical. So, <laughs> spooky. Do it, was that a happy moment in my life? To be honest, I just lost my dog. No, I was traumatized. 
Was I even checked in on set? Not really. I was so depressed. I was hardly sleeping. Like, if you watch, I know, like, no one's seen the pilot, but if you look at the pilot, like, my, I look just like this, gaunt. I, I look like I'm walking around like this because I'm just so exhausted from crying over my mom, over being cheated on in my long-term relationship, over my, my relationship failing, and over my dog dying. Like, it couldn't have gotten any worse at that point. But I yeah. still showed up to set. I did what I needed to do, and we filmed it, and it came out great, and we did the thing. Mm-hmm. Was it perfect? No. Amazing. It wasn't perfect. Considering what I was going through, I think it was pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Very good. It was, And it was amazing. You know, despite so many hardships that she went through, Crystal still made it her prerogative to make it a good experience Mm -hmm. for everyone involved as a team Mm -hmm. and I major respect for that um especially you know her having taken me under her wing as a producer and and giving me the wealth of knowledge that she has learned from her hardships um I really admired and respected that um watching her continue to push forward um in the midst of literal chaos Mm -hmm. literal chaos it was horrible so yeah yeah it it was wild. Mm-hmm. It was a wild experience for sure. Yeah, I mean, my dog. In the like, end, we pulled it off. I mean, just losing my dog was just the icing on the cake, and I was just like, I'm done. You know what I'm done. Mm-hmm. And um, but I was like, no, you have to go, Crystal. You didn't come this far to only come this far. Yeah. We went to set. We did the thing. We did the thing, and um, yeah. we, we got in several film festivals. Obviously, mm-hmm. that says something. That says something. Yeah. Um, and you know, I. I did- out of that. I it edited the amazing. pilot. Yeah, I mean, it came. By it's not perfect, but you know, I think that happens with growth too. And like, but remember, once again, Crystal's doing the job of twenty people. If yeah. I had enough people to be able to do their jobs, I probably wouldn't have been as overwhelmed either. But you know, it doesn't matter. I got the thing done. I got it done, and we did it, and it was a success. And um, you know, I have. It, I can't believe I went through all that, but I do feel like it made me a stronger person coming out on the other side because I know what I'm capable of now without being the victim. Yep, it's so true. I I remember we were having a conversation recently about the past and reminiscing because that's a very normal human experience to have, I think. And we were talking about how much growth and how much, you know, how did you do it? I remember you saying like, how did I pull that off a pilot in the midst of that? And you know, it just really goes to show you what you can be capable of when you have persistence and a dream and hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, it's just so admirable. Just such an admirable experience. Well, and um, you helped me a lot. I wouldn't have been able to done it. I mean, literally, like it was just... You, you you knew I was, you know, you were picking up the pieces and it was your first major shoot and you're like, I've got this. And I'm like, Ugh, are you sure? You know, like, you do. You know, it's, well, I mean, you know, and the only way to experience it is to just throw yourself into it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would never wish any of those experiences on anybody, but I'm grateful for the experiences mm-hmm. that I was able to have on set. Well, it's true because you you're going to have hard experiences on set. And I feel like that had to have just with me being so down with what I was dealing with in my personal life. You can't yeah. predict when that's going to ha- when that stuff's going to happen. And I think if you can get through a challenging shoot like that everything else is a breeze you know like I do I think it's meant to be because not every shoot's gonna be a breeze like there's gonna be weird things happen but for that to be such a hard one I think the rest are just like all right you know what we got this we got this it's so true Mm -hmm. it's so true and it goes to show you too like what you can accomplish when you have a team Mm -hmm. you know even if it is of just two or three people Mm -hmm. you know it's it it matters it matters when everyone's doing their part Mm -hmm. so pilot film mm-hmm. pilot mm-hmm. and you know and then we're we're just at where we're today quarantine happened and that too can't control <laughs> that either you and I, I, mean? I miss vegas so much you guys i haven't been out to vegas in like a year mm-hmm. been over a year now i think um i yeah. miss it quarantine I'll be there soon quarantine was weird it like canceled out some of our uh you know we we got into film festivals that turned digital because obviously no one could travel because of you know the rona Yep. And um, it didn't stop me, though. Panini. That didn't stop yep. me. I kept I kept pushing it. I kept pushing it. I kept pushing it. I'm going to push it till it's dead. 
Um, <laughs> and then we decided this year that if we didn't hear anything by about March for negotiations, um, that we were going to reshoot a, uh, a another pilot. Another one. Mm-hmm. And we are at the point that we can formally say we will not be having to shoot any more pilots. Yes. Yes. Wink. Yeah. yeah. The it's break. Great. The breakthrough yeah. may have finally happened, but I will not be confirming nor denying. Um, mm-hmm. I'm very. It's true. Where am I at today? I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> I am. We need a long nap. Okay, I, for like a year. <laughs> I've been doing this for about ten years, and I have ten years of trauma to unwind. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm tired. No, really. Like I, I we took like a break, really. and I'm tired. And um, yeah. I just, I'm tired. I haven't been on YouTube. We haven't streaming and we need some rest. And, um, I haven't been shooting content for social media. Cause to be honest, I just don't really care. Um, I'm back on TikTok and we're doing that, but I've just needed some rest. It's been, um, a really, really long journey. Um, and a long wait awaiting for this next chapter to finally begin. Um, and, yeah. and it's finally here. Thank God. So, um, mm-hmm. I don't, we won't be neglecting the podcast. We won't be neglecting the YouTube channel. Like I said, we may start a second channel just to toy with the algorithm to see if it can get a little bit better. Um, but I'm tired. That's just really the honest truth is I've been through a lot. Um, like I said, I, I've, this whole time I have had to lead with a lot of masculine energy. Um, I'm sorry, I have to brush my hair. It just feels like it's the humid. It's so hot. It's a hundred and... Oh. 13 here and I just feel like my hair nope. just keeps getting Ugh. fluffier but um, me with the humidity I get like all these wispies oof, you know saying? it's like an oven Having here a moment. <laughs> but um, I've had to lead with a lot of masculine energy this whole time and that is exhausting and I'm in a mode right now where you know I've done shadow work and therapy and all this stuff and self help and self love, but I'm at a point now where I need to refine my feminine energy and bring it back in a little bit more, because I don't need to be on. What's a good, what's a good way to describe on, this on defense? Uh, maybe like defense. Defense. I, yeah. Yep. You're thinking the same thing. Yep. Even with like dealing with Zach, I've had a lot of questions on that. I never wanted him to sign the pilot. I am so glad he did not. If he would have signed it, he would have been in control and he would have been doing the thing without me. I am so relieved that that path did not work out. There is no hard feelings. I just think that I have been leading with masculine energy for too long and it's now time to balance it back out a little bit. Um, And I think that's why I've been tired as I'm sort of re-welcoming in the feminine energy because I I do I felt like I've been on defense for so long what are negotiations like Kat are they quick do they just happen overnight and they're over with no no they don't no they do not they they take months and months and more months and months Mm -hmm. it's hard can anyone just go in and negotiate like is it an easy thing to just do no not at all especially as a woman you have to go in, like you've said, you know, with that masculine energy of almost like your suit of armor to be on the defense because they th- they're they going to throw a lot of curveballs at you, mm-hmm. you know? And that's how it's always been, you know, with any negotiation that you've had. And that's hard to un- unlearn that, mm-hmm. you know, um, when trying to segue into a misogynistic world. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the negotiation process is grueling. <laughs> It's grueling. Um, and you're you're the only... How many other people have been involved with negotiations? None. Just you. Other than you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, me. So does anyone yeah. else... Can anyone else speak on this process? No. No, they cannot. Right. <laughs> they, they cannot. Um, it really is its own, like... It's like a being in itself. Um, it's a whole other monster mm-hmm. uh, to have to tackle and to deal with. And uh, the waiting is the hardest part. Um, but it's all right. You know, that's just, that's part of film life. I can officially say that's part of film life. There's steps Uh, of it. You have to first find the person who's interested in you. 
then you yep. have to convince them, which is like maybe a producer with another production company. Then once mm-hmm. you've convinced that producer, now you have to convince the production company of your product and yourself and your worth. Then mm-hmm. if that goes through well, then you have to do it all over again with a studio or with the network. And so it, it can be repetitive. It takes a long time. You cannot force anyone to hurry up or you might as well just kiss the contract goodbye. While Mm -hmm. this is happening, you are in a preliminary contract with said people. Contracts can last anywhere from two months to six months. When that time is happening, you are not legally allowed to negotiate with anyone else outside of said contract, or you can get sued. Yep. It's a process. Mm-hmm. But that's why it's hard. That's why it's hard. I feel like, too, like, you have so much freedom and, like, creative expression when you're filming a pilot and editing and, like, getting excited and then watching the final product and then sending it out. Like, you know, that, that anticipation's exciting. But I feel like, from my point of view, like, when you go into the negotiation process and, like, things happen, you're like, oh, shit, this is, like, actually happening. hmm like this is that and that's like its own energy and then you're when when you're in limbo and then you're kind of like in just like the waiting phase you're like time slows down what's happening and ev- <laughs> like, you and, know like okay well and then you're on I, well i'm on call 24 7 when it's you happening. are absolutely but mm-hmm. in the meantime as if the negotiations aren't stressful enough they are watching your every move on social media you yep. fart wrong, they're going to have a problem with it. They're watching yep. your every move on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on the podcast. And if you make a wrong move, you're not for them. And it gets intense. It gets intense and you kind of get scared because you're like, I don't know if I should post anything. You know what I mean? Like, I just yeah, don't know if I should post. Um, you overthink it. You do. You know? Mm-hmm. It's easy to do that. It's mm-hmm. very easy to do that because it's, you know, such an amazing opportunity, mm-hmm. you know? But, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It's been funny. I'm only laughing funny. because Kat, this has been Kat's, like, largest major one she's been in with me recently. Yeah. And uh, you, you got really far into this one. Congratulations. I did. I was yeah. excited. It is. Compared to the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah you've, done, you've done well. You know, but I'm also faithful and loyal to the people that I work with. Like, we had another negotiation happen in January. They wanted to cut Kat because of her social media. I cut yeah. the contract. I cut the contract. I'm not going to do that. So, like, I'm faithful to people because I want people to be faithful back to me. And once again, I'm not going to hurt others with trauma because I've had that done to me. Don't do to others that's been done to you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. My mom just raised me to be, like, a kind soul on this planet. And, like, I don't – I think we have enough suffering. There's no point to inflict it on each other. It's true. It's true. And I think that, you know, when you approach situations, especially with other people, um, and you're, you know – you just know when work needs to be work and when personal is personal. Um, I think that some people can take advantage of the personal aspect of your kindness mm-hmm. um, and and use that as a means of like manipulation. Oh yeah. You know, and, and there is a distinct line, um, you know, where that's not okay. Mm-hmm. And that has, is what has happened in the past, unfortunately. And it's just a part of life, you know, there's lessons all around and you just keep going. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. gotta well, appreciate the beauty. In it. I think I told you this the other day too, is like, how is it that Shaylee came into, like, I mean, I've known Shaylee for a few years, but like, how did it just work out so well? You know what I mean? Like, she's just that perfect, like little piece to the puzzle. Yeah. I- Okay, I was just thinking that. How did it just work? That. You know, like, it's, the, yep. the long story short is, some people are meant to be on your journey temporarily, mm-hmm. and some people are meant to be on your journey long term, and not everyone's meant to be there for the whole part of the journey, you know, like, one the thing I lot. truly believe in, like, a lot of people are like, oh, Crystal, like, you're successful, like, how did you do it? Don't mm-hmm. act like I'm special. Anybody can do it. You have to put your mind to it. It's the law of attraction and learning how to manipulate energy. And like, but that's the thing is people like, oh, the law of attraction doesn't work. I just thought of $100. Look, it's not there. That's not how it works, boo. You have to work for it. You have to work for it. it You do. You have to make, (laughs) yeah. If you're going to imagine a Lamborghini to show up on your front porch, like you're being unreasonable here. 
Like you still have, there's other 12 laws of the, the universe that also have to come into play with it. But like, I think that we as people come to this planet or humans or beings, whatever we are, to learn how to manipulate energy. And yeah. you either success succeed at it or you don't. You know, like where did I start mine? I started studying millionaires and billionaires. How are they millionaires and billionaires? I want to be a millionaire. How? Mm -hmm. Because they apply the law of attraction to their life. They, yeah. they attract it into their life and like literally create like what they want without limitations. When you're surrounded by toxic people that are telling you, no, you can't do that, like your parents or your friends, you're going to believe it. You're going to believe, no, I cannot do that because the, I'm putting my limits within my own head. And mm -hmm. once you learn to master and create energy within your life and like and, and master, create like actual things like my Jeep, I've always wanted a Jeep, bought it a couple years ago. Once you start yep. creating, I wanted to move to Vegas, bam, there. Once you create those things in your life, money starts flowing into you like effortlessly and prosperity and abundance. So don't, I'm not special. Anybody can do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so true. And you've been such a spokesperson about that as well. And, and you have even offered insight and tools on how to do that, mm -hmm. um, you know, on your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed, you guys. Any good vibes you have? send them our way absolutely mm -hmm. you know things are things are looking up life is things good right up. now mm -hmm. yeah i had mm -hmm. a i had a rough mm -hmm. couple of weeks i lost a couple of people in my life which was really sad in fact yeah. i'd love to dedicate this stream to ricardo reina um he was a professor at unlv he was um an amazing amazing person he he's the one that taught me cinematography he uh I, I struggled really bad in film school at UNLV once again because I was a female. They did not want me there. Um, they didn't want a strong female there. And uh, I had reported a teacher um, and I did a YouTube video on it for basically stalking and harassing me. And the school and the department didn't do anything about it. He continued to stalk and harass me. And um, I was like, I went into Ricardo, my professor, one day, and I was like, I'm quitting. That's it. I'm done. I'm done with film. I'm done with you paranormal. I'm just done. And Ricardo was like, No, 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 no. You're you're gonna get up. Every time they knock you down, you're gonna get up. You're a female. You're indigenous. So what? Every time they say you can't do it, you show them 100 more times that you can. And so yeah. Ricardo was a huge mentor, like my number one mentor in film and paranormal. He started studying paranormal film just to help me. He was um, like, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Oh, he's so. such an amazing soul. And I, I went to UNLV a couple of times when I was visiting um, Vegas for work and uh, met, met Ricardo. Mm -hmm. And oh, just such a genuine soul, mm -hmm. such a genuine soul. I am very grateful to have been introduced to him and met him um you know before his passing yeah. so sad i'll be dedicating so future future projects to him for sure because i yeah. i definitely there was a time i wanted to give up and without him um i probably wouldn't be here and i'm very lucky that i got to have him in my life even if it was for a short time and temporary don't mm -hmm. you're gonna get me crying like i just you know, like not yeah, not a lot of people have uh, supported this journey. You know, it's not every day that your kid wakes up and says, "Hey, I want to be a ghost hunter when I grow up." You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it would have been true. easier to be an actress. And uh, Ricardo was, um, I mean, I'm lucky. There's not yeah. a lot of those genuine souls on this planet, and yeah. uh, he was one. He was yeah. one of them. He saw he saw through the bullshit of men. Yeah, he did. And and really just sees you for who you are and what you're capable of and you know was just such an advocate he was your cheerleader he was mm -hmm. you know yeah such such amazing person he was i was very lucky i went to his funeral i got to speak at it um last week and uh sorry guys i'm crying and oh. uh yeah i'm i'm lucky i have a new angel up there but uh you know i was really close to the next chapter of my life when he died and i would have liked to tell him and i know he knows now but uh yeah, you know, he would have really enjoyed that. He would have really thought that was cool that I uh, I was still making something of myself, you know. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, sorry I cried. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Woo. I mean, I think that's normal. That would be normal. Yeah, you know? I mean, it sucks because, like, uh, you know, my dad wasn't my, – my biological dad, I talked about him a little bit in my book. He wasn't a huge part of my life. Um, 
just because he was kind of a mess. He shouldn't have had kids, honestly. He just was one of those. And then my godfather stepped in, and he was amazing. And then he died. And I just feel like I always get these really strong male figures that support my feminism and movement, and then they die. And it's just, it's, it breaks me. It just breaks me. But, yeah. like, I know I have to pick up and carry on and, and, like, carry on their legacy to, like, show, like, look, you guys helped me on my path. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give up now because you helped me come this far, you know? So true. And, like, you know, their knowledge that they gave to you and, you know, you having to even just be around them and, like, watch them, you know? You're gonna be able to utilize that for your next chapter. Mm-hmm. And that's something that they would want you to do. Mm-hmm. He got to go to the, Ricardo went to the haunted museum with us. It's pretty funny. Um, He got to, he got to, he got to meet Zach actually, Ricardo did. And uh, Mm -hmm. he was like, is he, is Zach always that strange? Like, he just doesn't seem like that on, on, like, you know, on tape. Like, is he always that strange? You know, (laughs) it's like, (laughs) he was so genuine. Oh, he was so genuine. So, yeah. Kind soul. Kind soul. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much where crystals at and where we're at you know as a crew right now um Mm -hmm. on this journey and i'm thank you crystal for letting me be a host Mm -hmm. tonight this is weird (laughs) there's a new new for everything you know you gotta try one everything great but i just you know it's an honor honestly because you know crystals bring through the ringer and you know she she is deserving to have her story told and she should be the one to do it it's true. You know? Yeah, I mean, like, it's... Um, I, I, I just want to be a voice for other people that understand that, like, I think it's a very human thing to go through tough times and challenges. Mm-hmm. I've said for years, and I don't know why, I assume it's my old soul, but I always say that this is one of the hardest planets to live on. I don't know why I know that. I just do. Mm-hmm. I think that the, the souls that need the biggest... Um, maybe the oldest souls come here to learn hard lessons... Um, But this is a hard planet, and uh, we go through some really difficult things that we write in our path and our our life contracts. And it doesn't need to define you or take you over. It doesn't need to um, stop your life from progressing in a positive way. You know, like, we, we all have hard times. Like, I mean, there's other people out there I know that have been through their own... Kat has her own story, too. And um, just remember to always pick yourself back up because, you know, the number one cheerleader needs to be yourself. I have mm-hmm. lost 99% of people out of my life who haven't supported my dreams or my path, and that includes family. And I told mm-hmm. Kat this the other day is like, blood ain't always blood. Family ain't always blood. It's not. Family can be yeah. a friend. And I mean, Kat and I, I think we go way back on the other side. Yeah. So just, you know, find your path, stay to it. You're, you're going to be told no, you're going to fail. You'll learn from the failures. The failures are good. You have no idea how many failures I've had. And I have mm-hmm. needed every single one of them because every single failure has led me up to this point where I'm at right now. It's true. It, it doesn't matter how many times you're told no or how many times the door is slammed in your face. Mm-mm. What matters is how many times you get back up. Mm-hmm. And, and you've always been a spokesperson on that. Mm-hmm. Also, buy Crystal's book, The Love Diaries. Okay, I just want to put that in there. It's really good, guys. Really. I think Dead. we're still wanting to do a stream on this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So At some point. that's why I'm doing the shameless plug here to make sure you read it. It could be like a little mini book club yeah. on a stream talking about it. You know? I love it. Oh, love God. My love life. Oh, yeah. Jesus. That's a whole nother drama kit going on, you know? I don't want to yeah. talk. And you know what? People always say, like, why don't you talk about your love life? Because I don't want to. Okay? <laughs> I, like, it's nobody's business. Like, you know why? Because yeah. you look at the tabloids of, like, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, right? For example. Mm-hmm. And, like, they're going through some shit. Like, they're going through the divorce. Like, they're going through custody battles. And then you look under the comment section and everybody thinks they're entitled to a comment on what they should and shouldn't do. And it's like, I don't want people to have that kind of power over my life. So, no. I share enough of my life. I share my makeup. I share my Jeep. I (laughs) share my fashion. I share my paranormal getaways. Will I share my love life? No. It's none of your business. I don't want you talking about me. You know what I mean? Better keep some some form of privacy. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. We're still human. You know? Yeah. But this was great. This, this was, was a good fun. stream. It was. It was good. Thank yeah. you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Kat, for being the host. That was just amazing. Fine. 
<laughs> it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> Next week will be yeah. Elfie with um, Lake Monsters. Lake Monsters. We love Elfie's knowledge. You guys have to wait for, you know. She's amazing. Oh, she's just a genius. Shaylee's she's, amazing, She's too. a genius. I mean, Shaylee's amazing, too, but Elfie's, like, the genius of the crew. She's, like, a library in her brain. You know, know what I mean? She's, like, a wealth of knowledge. She is. That's and then so if she great. doesn't know something, she's like, hmm, I'm going to buy some books on that. I'll get back to you on it. Like, <laughs> I'm going to buy 10 books on it. I love it. And it's, and it's, it's amazing. She's, it's amazing. She's got to be on the genius spectrum, honestly. And then Shaylee's awesome. She's. You guys are going to get to know Shaylee a little bit more. Um, very soon she's going to be coming on streams with us and she's, um, she likes to do like serial killer stuff and like where they haunt serial killer side of things. And, um, she likes different topics. So we're going to, we're going to change things up with Shaylee and, um, yeah, just stay tuned for everything. And, uh, I think that was a good, that was a good comeback stream for sure. This was, this was fun. Oh, this make fun. sure you're following us on TikTok, Okay. Because it's starting to yes. get really serious. Okay. And it's a thing. It's, it's a, a thing now. Yeah, like I mean, Cat and I are on TikTok. Cat Cormier, Crystal Leandra, but like Ghost Girl Diaries is on TikTok, and mm-hmm. I'm, Cat's going to be starting uploading next week. But I've already I've uh-huh. started it just to get it going with like the algorithm thing, and I think Shaylee's going to. She's like, I'm ready to jump in too. So yeah, yeah, she's I want ready you, to yeah, it's going to be just different fun content, fun random content. So make sure you're following us on TikTok. Link is in bio, or go to ghostgirldiaries.com, and make sure you're following us on social media. And, yeah. uh, yeah, like we've been quiet cause we've been busy and tired and resting. Rest yeah. is important. Mm-hmm. We can't run on as the energizer bunny 24 mm-hmm. seven. Well, so. also when we're quiet, that's when things are going on. I, you know, I've told people that before, like when I'm quiet on social media, it's because I have bigger fish to fry right now. And, and it's been yeah. like 110 in Vegas. I'm tired. I'm, I'm hot. Ugh. Ooh. I want to move yeah. to like somewhere cold for the summers Alaska. <laughs> seriously thank you guys so much make sure you're following us on social media you can find all of our content including my book on ghostgirldiaries.com we will catch you guys next week with Elfie and as always we will catch you guys next, next time. time bye guys bye Back from the dead.